Hello and welcome to the second week recap for the Champion Draft Series. I am one of your hosts, the Pinkest of Ghosts, and joining me today we have all the way from Brazil, Joey. Joey, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Pink. I'm very honored to be here. I'm very excited about these games. I'm very excited for this week. We had a pretty uh, riveting week, I guess I would oh, say, yeah. right? 100%, 100%. We had a lot of very exciting, very tense games, and a lot of interesting things that we've noticed uh, going into this week. So let's get right into that. So this week we saw the importance of adaptations in the Champions Draft series, as players who didn't change their lineups were punished for it, and players who adapted into the player roosters they were playing saw a lot of success, right, Go. So take it away for us. Yeah, Joy, I mean, that's basically exactly what happened this week. Players were very much rewarded, uh, the ones that chose to uh, adapt to the lineups of the other players, and the ones that didn't really change their lists much at all found limited success this week. I mean, just look at Ikado's lineup right here. Um, very different from what he brought last week. And he brought a much more aggressive lineup, targeting what I believe was Capto Circuit's Rise deck, planning to leave that unbanned and go for a very aggressive strategy. He brought Elites, uh, with, a, with a little bit of Aphelios attached in there. He brought Pirates. He brought Leona Katarina Aggro. Like, this guy was going to go ham, much more different from the uh, much more controlly lineup that he brought last time with Tybalk and such. Uh, but look at Capitao. These are his lists from last week, and these are his lists for this week. And as you can see, there's very few changes. The new formula card was slotted into Jace Lux, but that, that deck just happened to be banned, so not really any changes in that lineup. Now we go to the Spids and Tempo matchup. Spids bring these incredibly different decks, bringing uh, Alawi Gwen, bringing um, Nar Darius, which she did bring Nar Darius last time, but this is a Bandle Controllist, very much targeting Pirates, very much targeting Azir Aurelia. Um, and you can go into Spidge's video that she put out last week to show exactly her card placement and how she chose those cards to tech into her opponents. Tempo, these are Tempo's lists from the last week. These are Tempo's lists from this week. Did you notice any changes? Well, if you didn't, that's right, because there weren't any. It's the exact same list. And I know that Tempo is very confident with these lists. He has a lot of experience with these decks, and he's very confident that they perform very well into a very wide field. But Joey, Tempo's not playing into a wide field. Tempo's playing into opponents with limited champions, with limited rosters, and limited resources. And I would love to see him, Capitao, and many of our players going into these next few weeks adapting and choosing to specifically try to at least target their opponents uh, to make sure that they might just grab that edge and yeah that is something that i would love to see from these players going forward in this series because it seems to be rewarding them yeah, for sure i mean uh speaking as a brazilian native i guess i am used to seeing a lot of brazilians as good deck builders good like adaptators into whatever comes at them so i would really like to see for instance mafia Jew stepping a bit of her shell trying some stuff like some new stuff for her next opponent and i know that circuit is a great deck builder maybe he stick to stuck to his previous lineup because he was doing so great but now it's a new patch there are new cards around and i hope to see more innovation from him we can't wait to see how the rest of this series turns out moving forward and how these players adapt but now we want to do a bit of a deeper dive into one of the spicy decks from this week. This is Deck Dives. The Legends of Runeterra scene is at this point quite familiar with Targon P and Z piles and all the many variations of cards that they can run. But Elzon brought a lot of extra spice into her variation of the list. And that is what we are diving into today. Joey, uh, is there anything that immediately stands out here to you? I mean, these are some of my favorite cards. To be honest, these are some of my favorite cards. I love, like, just setting yourself up for having a variety of options, which is mostly what these uh, Piltovian on Targon lists tend to do. So I really love, like, Solaris Sunforge is a great text for any aggro deck that you might face. You have 
you know, the catastrophe is just perfect. You have formula, <laughs> of course. You have Aloof Travelers is one of my favorite cards in the whole meta game. I feel like for the last five metas, so really is like just a pile of very good cards, I guess, Pink. Yeah, absolutely. And you have the back alley bar for discounts, but she's also running two copies of just main decked back alley bar keep just for more card generation. Get those new cards for the for the big cat for Zoe. Uh, just able to give you all these variations. Yeah, and I swear the champion draft series is not biased, even though we're looking at another deck here with out of the way. But the way it combos with cards like Divine Judgment or even cards like Ambush, Pale Cascade, uh, it can get really funny really quickly. And it is just a cute little combo to be able to pull off. There's a lot of cute little combos in this deck. There's a lot of different combos that you can see straight away with this deck, and I'm sure there will be a lot of different combos you can see once that barkeep sends you some different cards to spice up all of your matches and make them feel unique. Absolutely. So I a lot of praise to Elzon for her list this week. But remember, this is not the only spicy list that we saw this week. We've got a lot of talented deck builders in this series, and if you want to peek at this week's lists, uh, make sure to check out the link below where we'll have all the players lists from week two accessible for the viewers at home. So for the highlight of the week, Pink, we had one of my favorite reasons and moments to play Runeterra ever, which is when we make those unique plays that no one expects, we take those out of the box and completely blow away our opponents. And also, we, there was a, the inclusion of one of my favorite cards to generate in hand when you need to, Passage Earner. So let's take a look at this match of Apesol versus Elzon for the highlight of the week. Oh! This is a pretty risky move, but I don't mind it, to be fair. That's a lot of Extalis. That's a lot of Extalis. <laughs> We're doing it for the memes, at least. We're doing it for at least the memes. All right, let's go with, uh, uh, I think that's it then. Oh, I think that's it. Oh, I think that's it. Oh my fucking God. Also the 664 memes. Oh shit. <laughs> fucking passage on earth. Uh, Soul Cleave as well on, oh. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah, it's been a hot second since I've seen Darkness on center stage, but with some of those amazing pulls and incredible lines with cards like Soul Cleave, I have not seen Darkness be able to do things like that before, so shout out to Absol. He was down 1-0 going into that game, and he ended up pulling it out uh, in the final match, so uh, congrats to him for how he played that and giving us a fantastic show. Can't wait to see more from him in the series. But that about wraps it up for today's recap. As always, first, here is the scores going into the season. We have Mafraju in a dominating lead so far, but the rest of the competition is still pretty tightly knit. It can still be anyone's game competing for finals. So it's going to get really intense for these next couple of weeks. Uh, here is the schedule. For the next week, we've got a bunch of interesting matches, so make sure if you can to catch them live. If not, you can join us here next week for our week three recap. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and thank you, Joey, for joining me on this recap. Thank you, Pink, for having me. I generally love this series, and I can't wait to see what comes up next. Neither can I, but for now, we are going to have to wait and see. Adios!